In this video, we're going to be covering how to create and edit text objects in Photoshop, including the differences between headers and paragraphs, all of the different formatting options that you have when you create text objects, and also all of the paragraph styles and all of the font types that you can access in Adobe Photoshop. Cool, so welcome back to my design class. Let's jump right in and find the text tool. So to find the text tool, it's very, very simple. Simply on the left hand toolbar, and you can see it's just below the pen tool and just above the selection tool, and it's got a character of T. Now there's two options that we have when we want the text tool. First of all, it's important to note that the shortcut to this tool is T. So that's for both Windows and Mac. Anytime you press the letter T on your keyboard, it will always take you directly to the text tool. So if you just simply hold on this icon, as you can see, we have a few options for when we create text. So we have horizontal type text, which is just text typed out horizontally. So that's from left to right. And then we've also got the vertical type tool or the vertical text tool type text. It doesn't really matter what you call it as long as you know what it is. So the vertical type tool is actually where you can arrange your text going from top to bottom. So these are the two options that you have. I'm going to start off with the horizontal type tool. So if we just let go and select that option, as you can see, our cursor automatically changes to this new text tool. Now, when it comes to creating text, there are two different ways you can do it. First of all, you can create what is called headers or titles. So all you have to do to do this is just press once with your left mouse key. And as you can see, this generates a line of text for us. But if I just quickly undo this by going to this stop button at the top. The other way you can also do is you can generate paragraphs. So paragraphs, we often want to be able to format within a container. So all you have to do to do this is hold and drag and a small box appears. This is with your left mouse key. And as you can see, I can format this paragraph to however large I want it to be. And for example, let's say I release there. As you can see, all of the text is now contained within this box. So there are a few advantages to being able to edit all of your text within a box. For example, if I just make the text slightly smaller, as you can see, it's always going to be contained to this container. So no matter how much I scale my container, the text is always going to snap directly to it and everything it will only be visible within this container. So this is very handy when you're perhaps laying out an entire document with all sorts of different paragraphs and you want to be able to contain them all with different paragraph styles as we have at the top here. Perhaps you want the text to be aligned to the left of your container, to the center or to the right. And that's about the same as in Windows. So hopefully that already is slightly familiar. I'm just gonna leave it left aligned for now. Now, obviously there are advantages to the other way. So if I just quickly cancel this once again and just press once to create a header like we had before. Well, the advantage of having a header is that it isn't contained to a container. If I make this smaller, as you can see, there are no limits to this text and I can position it wherever I want. And this is more helpful for things like headers and titles, perhaps on your document, where you don't want them to be constricted to a certain space. Now, once you've made a text, this is both for when you create it in a paragraph or header form. In fact, all of the other options that we'll be covering throughout the video will be applicable to both paragraph and header text options. So in order to move our text, all we have to do is hold command or control if you're on Windows. And as you can see, a small box appears. Now this doesn't change this header text to a paragraph text. It simply allows us to change the scale position and rotation of our text. So if I now release command, as you can see, we still have no container. So that's just something to be aware of. Now, when you hold down this option, it's very similar to what we do when we had free transform. So when you're in free transform, you can scale your object. So that's the same here. If you go to one of these dots in the corners or in the middle of our edges, and as you can see, the cursor changes to this double way arrow pointing in opposite directions. I can now actually go ahead and scale our text just by dragging on any of these corners in order to change the size. Now you can also rotate your text. So if you just go slightly further out from those dots, as you can see, the cursor once again changes to this sort of curved arrow. Once it's like this, you can simply hold and drag and move and change the rotation of the text object. And you can move it to however many degrees you want. As you can see, when I'm holding it in, there's a small box that appears to the right of the cursor, which allows me to see how many degrees I'm actually rotating this 
text object by. So I'm just going to quickly reset that to zero. And finally, we can actually also move our text. So if we hover over the text itself, as you can see, the cursor once again changes. It's just this solo arrow. And I can actually just hold and move our text wherever we want it. Say I didn't want any of these changes to be applied. All I have to do is press on this stop. And as you can see, because I hadn't already saved the text itself, it's actually got rid of it entirely. So if I just press once again, there we have it again. And now we've just got it set. Now, if you actually want to save this text before you go ahead and make all of these changes to make sure that this doesn't happen to you, all you have to do is press on this tick to confirm your choices. And Photoshop has created the layer and won't actually delete it in the future. Now, there are a few ways you can actually select your text once again, once you are out of the text edit option. You can either make sure that you're still on the text tool and just press on the text once when you're hovering over it. As you can see, we get a cursor, we can select text, we can change text, whatever we want. Now, if I just quickly confirm those choices again, another way you can change the text is you can actually go to the thumbnail of the text object in the layers panel. And all you have to do is go over to the thumbnail and double click with your left mouse button. And as you can see, this also selects all of the text and we can now go ahead and make our changes. The final way you can also do it is if you go to the move tool for to which the shortcut is V for both Windows and Mac. If you actually double click on the text itself, that will also allow you to select the text and make any changes. Cool, so let's go over some of the fundamental things that you can change to your text. So I can obviously change the text itself just by typing something in on my keyboard. Like so. I can actually select all of my text and in order to change any of the text properties, as you can see at the top of our Photoshop window, we have a whole set of parameters that correspond directly to this text object. So first of all, you have a button which allows you to actually switch between vertically and horizontally aligned text. So like we had with those two options for the text tool itself, if I just press on this once, as you can see, it's now going to align our text vertically. But if I want it to remain horizontally, I just press on that once again, and I can switch that back. Next, we have our font. So at the moment, it's set to Zero Pro, which is one of the fonts available in Adobe Typekit. But if you want to select any other font, so let's say Arial, then as you can see, it automatically takes you to that font as long as the text is selected. And then you've also got some options for the font itself, whether you want it to be italic, bold, or bold italic. Now next we have the size of the text. So there's two ways you can do this. Either you can actually select the value itself and just input a number. So let's say 50 and then press enter. And as you can see, it will scale our text to 50 points, which is how the size of text is valued. Or you can hover over the size of the text icon itself. And as you can see, the cursor changes to this arrow and hand, which is pointing in two directions. If you hold and drag right, you can increase the size of your text. Or if you hold and drag left, you can decrease the size of your text. So that's just a quick way. But if you want to be more precise, you might want to input the value yourself. You've also got this drop down if you want to set it to any of these specific set text sizes already. Now, this next option has to do with the pixelation of the text object itself. I won't go into too much detail about this because if you're a beginner, you don't really need to know, but it just has to do with anti-aliasing and other issues that we might face when it's Photoshop's actually generating the text object itself. But for now, you can just simply ignore that. Then we've also got the paragraphing options. So this is, like I said before, just like Windows. If you want to align your text to the left, you can use that option right. And then we've also got center. Then the next parameter we can change is the color of the text. And as you can see, this brings up a color picker. Now I have got a video on how to use the color picker. So if you're interested in learning about the basics of color, I'd highly recommend you check that video out. I'll make sure I leave a link to it in the description below. But as you can see, what we can do is we can basically change the color of our text. So for example, let's say I wanted it to be red. All I have to do is slide that to the top and just press OK. And if I just confirm our choices at any time you make any changes to the text at all, you've always got to remember you've got to go to this tick option in order to confirm your choices. If you're unhappy with the changes you made, you can press on the stop sign and that will undo any of the changes you made. 
but if you haven't actually saved your text object initially, it will actually delete that layer. So that's something to be aware of. So we can just press on this tick and as you can see, all of those changes have now been applied. So that's great. We know how to create a text object, how to rotate, scale and position our text object, how to select our text object and how to change some of the fundamental parameters, including size, font and color. But Photoshop actually also comes with a whole set of other parameters that you can also change. For example, what if I wanted the spacing between the two words to be slightly different? Or if I wanted the spacing between the characters to be different or the size and the thickness of the characters to be different? Well, we can actually change all of these parameters. So in order to open up more settings for the text object, what we have to do is go to window at the top and then just make sure there is a tick next to character. And if you just press on that once, as you can see, we get a whole new panel open on the right hand side. Now, one thing to bear in mind is if I quickly deselect this layer, if I make any changes while the layer is not selected, it won't actually affect the layer. So if you're ever wondering why something's not changing, it's always best just to double click on the layer itself and make sure that the text is actually selected. Now, as you can see, some of these parameters are the same as the ones that we have at the top here, but some of them are also different and allow us to customize our text slightly further. Now, I won't be going over all of these because there are some quite specific ones, but I'll just go over one or two that are handy to know just to get you started with the text tool. Now, like before, we can change the font, the type of the font, the size of our text, and we can also change the color. Now, one thing I didn't explain before is at the moment I have all the text selected. So as you can see, I've actually gone ahead and selected everything and it's within this white box, which is telling me that I've selected that part of the text. But say I didn't actually want to change the entire word. I only wanted to change the second half of this word, just the P, the L and the E. And I want to leave the SAM intact. Well, if I just make sure that's selected and make any changes, as you can see, it's only going to affect that part of the text. So this is a great way to be able to customize everything within the text itself. If, for example, I wanted this M to be a different color, I could go ahead, create a different color, press the tick to confirm my choices. And as you can see, I've been able to change that character alone. Now I'm actually going to undo this because I didn't actually want to make those changes. So in order to undo this, I'm just going to press Command and Z on my keyboard or that will be Control and Z if you're on a Windows computer. So if I just quickly double click on the text object thumbnail and make sure that all of my text is selected. Well, the first issue that we had before was the spacing between the lines. So the distance between this sample and the text is quite great. We have a gap between the two words, but we can actually change that within our first option. So as you can see, there's this small icon which has two A's and then a small arrow between the two, indicating the distance between the two. Now, as you can see, if I hover over the icon, we get that same thing as we had before with scaling the text, where we can actually drag and go ahead and change the size of our text. And the same applies for all of the icons in this section. So if I go ahead and drag to the right, the spacing between the lines increases. And if I go to the left, the spacing between the lines becomes much less until they are zero and they're on the same line. I obviously want some distance so I can actually read the characters. So maybe I want it at something like this, 130, and we'll just leave it like that. Now, the next thing we had was the spacing between the characters, and that's that next option below that line spacing option. And once again, we can go and hold and drag to the right in order to increase the distance between our characters. And we can drag to the left in order to decrease the distance between those characters. So once you're happy with those choices, we can just let go. Now these are automatically changed in increments of 20. So it'll jump from zero, which is what its default set as. If I just press that. And as you can see, if I drag to the right, it's going to change in 20, but you can actually customize these to any number that you want without decimal places. Now, if we want to change the characters itself, for example, say we have this E character at the end, and I actually even want to increase the width of it. Well, I can just once again, go ahead and drag with this option, which is just below the distance between our characters option. So if I drag to the right, as you can see, I can increase the width, 
And if I drag to the left, I can decrease the width. And if I just quickly reset that to 100, which was its default, press enter. The same goes for height. So I can actually go ahead and make this E much, much taller. If I drag to the right and drag to the left to decrease the size of our E. And that's with the same option, but on the left hand side of this panel. I'll just quickly reset that once again. And then finally, the last option I'm going to cover within this top section of this panel is the option that allows us to adjust the spacing between the bottom of the line. So this is indicated where this white line follows the bottom of the text and actually the character itself. So if I drag to the right on that option, as you can see, I can actually reposition the E slightly higher above that initial baseline. But if I drag it to the left, I can actually drop it below that line. So that's just a quick and easy way if you want a character to be at a different level to all of the other characters in your text. So the default for that was zero. So I'll just reset that now. And as you can see, our E is back. Now one or two other options, if I just quickly select all of the text, we have a few buttons below all of those options. So the first one is whether we want our text to be bold. So as you can see, it was bold, but if I undo that, it is now no longer bold but then I can always go ahead and reapply that. Now I did say we also had that option here. So this is automatically a bold option, but if you want to apply a bit of extra bold, you can go ahead and do that with this option. The next one along is italics. So we can put our text in italics if we want to do that too. We've also got this next one, which changes all of our text to uppercase. So if I just quickly change this text to demonstrate this, So I now have a mixture of uppercase, which is this first character, and then lowercase characters, which are these last five in the sample, which I can't seem to select, and then an uppercase character and lowercase characters here. Well, if I select all of the text and press on this all caps option, it will change all of your text to all caps. So it's something you don't have to worry about, or if you've made a mistake, then you don't have to go ahead and retype all of the text. You can just simply do that and it will change it all to all caps. You can undo that and it'll actually remember how you initially had it, which makes it a very handy option if you're unsure as to whether caps will work in your design. You can quickly toggle and toggle off that option in order to see if it works. Now, if I just quickly undo that, the next option that we have long is also change all our text to uppercase characters, but in this time there'll be smaller characters. So as you can see, the initial character is the normal size that we have, but then the following characters in that word are all smaller than the initial character. So that's another styling option that you have. Now, furthermore, if I just quickly select the latter half of this word and go to the next option along, the next options that we have allow us to change the script. So whether we want superscript or whether we want subscript. So superscript is where I actually take our text and place it at the top something that's often used in maths. So as you can see, something like that, where in maths, you might have something squared to something else where you put the two in the top right hand corner. This is what that is. Or you can do the bottom and where it'll place at the bottom, which I believe is in science for things like H2O. Then the next option that we have is underline. So if I just go ahead and select all of the text so we can see it, and increase the line spacing between the two words so we can actually see the underlining. If I just quickly toggle that back on, as you can see, we now have a underline underneath all of our text. But if I quickly select that again and undo that, the next option along is actually a line through our text. So this is another style option that you might want to use if you're trying to cross out text within your document. So those were all of the fundamentals as to how to create and edit text in Photoshop. So we covered the text tool, how to change the position, scale and rotation of our text, how to select our text and how to change most of the parameters, including font, size, spacing between characters and lines, and then all of the options to actually customize the characters themselves, as well as bold, italics and underline. If you have any questions, then do let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer as many as I can. And do remember to subscribe and leave a like on this video if you enjoyed the content.